growl of the chainsaw, a sound many coastal residents learned to loathe since it meant that another majestic oak had lost its battle with Hurricane Katrina. But today that sound represents hope and renewal, thanks in part to sculptor Marlon Miller. Well, those oaks are two and three hundred years old, so they, that's the roots of the coast. And to rather than get rid of them, to have them uh, decorated where they'll still last is uh, a sign of recovery and renewal. So uh, it's good to keep them, the trees, rather than have them cut down. Something different every day to try to keep the people uh, focused on going forward. The city of Alexi originally commissioned chainsaw artist Dayton Scoggins to create the first five sculptures along Highway 90. But then Marlon Miller came to town. Marlon always remembered that the people of Biloxi went down and helped after Hurricane Ivan down in Florida. So he always wanted to get here to do something to help this community. He wanted to do them for free. So knowing me, you know, I'm gonna take anything for free that we can get a hold of. I was initially gonna do two sculptures and, uh, and uh, spend a few weeks, and now it's been almost two years, and we have the whole coastline filled with these. Well, this is my gift, and that's how it works with gifts. You know, I started out, uh, again, it evolved into a, big, uh, into a bigger project than I had anticipated, so yeah, I did. Uh, I did contribute quite a bit of my personal money uh, uh, to this project. It's kind of neat now, it's evolved into something even bigger than I could have imagined and so now we have some corporate sponsorship, Steel Corporation and, and uh, some of the big casinos have gotten on board with us and it's really helped uh, uh, allow me to continue to, to, to expand on this. You know, he just gets into it and uh, I guess a good imagination and he just he gets that chainsaw and it's just amazing how it turns out. We caught up with Marlin at the Institute for Marine Mammal Studies in Gulfport, where he was sculpting, appropriately enough, dolphins. And, uh, dolphins being the marine mammal of the state and the most predominant uh, in the Mississippi Sound was really uh, uh, something that we felt uh, would epitomize uh, that species and was very appropriate to be at our research center. Well, when I look at a tree, I always say that Mother, Mother Nature already put the sculpture there, so basically I'm just going to open it up. Marlin finished these sculptures in two days, but some of his larger pieces can take up to several weeks to complete. And I seem to really connect with marine life, and that's what I see in these trees. Uh, and, and I wanted to do marine life that was kind of indigenous to the Gulf Coast, and I think we've, uh, we've stuck with that pretty well. I, I'm a sculptor, and I sell my sculptures for a living. I have a studio in Florida, and I make uh, small wood sculptures that I uh, have in galleries, uh, art shows, and I ship sculptures all around the world. As far as going to someone's home and putting one of these sculptures in a dead tree that they have, I've declined all of those offers. And over the last two years, I've turned away hundreds and hundreds of people because I didn't want to do anything that would commercialize this or what I believed would mess with the integrity of this project. And so I'm committed now over to the next five or ten years to expand this project and do it strictly for community service, fundraisers, charities, uh, and never on a, in a commercial way. Well, you know, I wear uh, the big heavy chaps, uh, try to wear a light, airy shirt. Got to, of course, wear a lot of face protection, ear protection, and a breathing apparatus, uh, which restrict a little bit of oxygen. You get a lot of sawdust on your arms that works as an insulator. So it is very hot, but it's kind of crazy because I, I, when I get up there and I, I'm, I'm, I'm working on that, and people watching me hear the noise and see the mess and think it's a horrible condition, but 
in all reality, it's very serene for me, and I feel like I'm uh, painting on a canvas out on a quiet beach somewhere. I would take Marlon Miller over uh, uh, any uh, plastic surgeon that I know of. He can do wonders, I can promise you that. He draws a crowd wherever he goes, but it's not, uh, it's not easy, and his talent is astounding, absolutely astounding. An extensive crowd gathered around Marlin and his eagle sculpture in downtown past Christiane, joined by Robin Roberts and her family for the dedication to their patriarch, Colonel Lawrence Roberts, a Tuskegee Airman. I was five minutes into this tree and I had a, a, a dad and little boy came up and, and uh, the dad asked me what it was going to be and the little boy said, well, it's going to be an eagle. It, it kind of looked like this before I ever came along. So on this carving here, I was just pretty much along for the ride. We've had such devastation to come out of this storm, and, and this has just been such an overwhelmingly inspirational and emotional story that's a great story. This project stands for the resolve and the resilience of the people that were here on the coast initially. You know, it, it represented uh, you know, them coming in here and having to do this great big rebuild and, 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 and doing it with such a positive attitude. And um, so really that, uh, I think that's uh, reflective of this entire coast and the attitude after Katrina. What started as a tribute to the people of the Gulf Coast has transformed into a great photo opportunity for tourists. These have become the number one tourist attraction down here on the coast, and so we're bringing people off of Interstate 10 and uh, I guess helping business and all. The branches that sprouted out of two of Marlin's sculptures has caused quite a stir along the coast. You know, I'd carved two or three cypress trees. Uh, I guess this is the controversy for as being an artist, you know, carving a live tree, but these trees were designated by the DOT to be cut down. They had the big R's on them. And I came back and sprayed over the R to, to save the tree and put a, put a couple simple sculptures in. The next year they started growing these branches out and they've been real, uh, pieces of conversation for, for the locals that these carvings are coming back to life. Uh, and I guess we just have to tell people that had I not carved the tree that DOT would have cut them down and there'd be nothing here right now. So I guess we're going to call this a nest and press on with it. What I have gotten out of this project is so much bigger than money I can't even tell you. The emotions and the thousands of people that have come up to me have made this uh, much larger than I ever dreamed. Frankly, it's difficult for him to get work done when he's here for the number of people that come up to him and they tell him the same story over and over and over. And that is just to thank him, to tell him what they've been through, and just they're just so overcome with emotion as they relate their story to him and they relate to him what this has meant to them to drive down the highway and to know that somebody thinks so much of this community that they give this gift. And, and it's a gift that's gonna give for years, for generations to come. For a copy of this program, call 601-432-6294 or send a check or money order for $14.95 to Mississippi Public Broadcasting, 3825 Ridgewood Road, Jackson, Mississippi, 39211. Please indicate the name and date of the program.